Hello, welcome to Theoretical Perspectives. If you're an undergrad or key ideas in social anthropology, if you're a master's student, uh, these two modules um, model each other, reflect each other. Uh, so the um, lectures that I'll be doing online for you this term are going to be uh, the same. Of course, our discussions will differ in tutorials if you're an undergrad or seminars if you're a, a master's student. Um, it's really a great pleasure to welcome you to this course. It's the course that I'm most psyched about teaching. I love teaching theory. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what the kind of rationale of the course is uh, in a minute. Um, let me start off by saying that, of course, in this uh, COVID situation that we're all living in still, um, teaching is going to be uh, partly or largely online on this module, uh, as with so many other modules of yours. How's it going to work? It's going to work with you watching some of these clips like this one uh, in advance of your tutorials or seminar. Uh, and then coming to your tutorials, having watched these uh, clips and having read the required readings, which we'll talk about a little bit in a minute too, um, you're then able to discuss this. And if you're an undergraduate, to formulate questions that you can then pose to me Priyanka and Nargis, the assistants who are teaching the tutorials um, for you this, this year, uh, so that we can answer them in a live online Q&A lecture that for undergraduates happens on Wednesdays at 9 a.m., nice and early. Uh, for the postgraduate students taking key ideas, um, the questions that you need to pose can be posed in the seminars that take place on uh, Thursdays, right? So essentially you watch the clip, you do the readings, you discuss it with your tutorial assistants, uh, with myself, and we have a Q&A as well um, uh, as a lecture for the undergraduates. That's the kind of way that the course works. Every week I'll be recording these clips. Some of them will be with me speaking live to the camera like you see here. Uh, others will be without my face. I'm not that good looking anyway, so there's not you don't miss much. Um, it's going to be my voice speaking to a PowerPoint because I'm very proud of my PowerPoint. Um, so each week a lot of it will be like a bit like a kind of podcast with a PowerPoint attached. But each week there'll be an introductory um, clip with me speaking to camera so you can see my face so it feels a bit more kind of personalized as well and those will be uploaded by the latest at 12 noon on Friday each week for the following week uh, so you'll be able to have time to watch them okay uh, so let me say a little bit about what the aims and objectives of this uh, module are so of course you will have read these from your handbook from uh, or, you know online from the Moodle page um, hopefully you've all had an opportunity to visit the Moodle page uh, for, for your module and all of the information is up there. But really I wanted to kind of introduce you to this question of what the aims and objectives of this course uh, are with reference to a distinction that really um, is on my mind when designing this course, which is, is this really a history course? Is it a, a history of anthropological theory? Or is it a theory course which really is about acquainting you with central anthropological concepts that anthropologists use when trying to theorize social and cultural uh, life, right? Now, the answer, of course, as you might have suspected, is that it is both. But every teacher who is challenged to give a course such as this, and there are such courses, and I believe all anthropology programs in the UK, all of them have some form of this course or other, the challenge that one is confronted with is which way around to go about it. Should one give priority to the history or to the theory? And what I've decided for this course is to give priority to the theory. I think of this course as an opportunity to acquaint students with the core co concepts that they'll need in order to engage with anthropological theorizing in other modules that you might be taking, taking as part of your studies, right? It's kind of giving you the toolkit of central conceptual theoretical concerns that uh, you need in order to train yourself as an anthropologist, which is what you've bargained for in taking this uh, degree with us here at UCL, right? 
However, the way that I go about acquainting you with these concepts is indeed historical in the sense that we will move slowly from week to week through a kind of roll call of approaches as they kind of develop chronologically in the discipline, very roughly, right? We won't follow a strict chronological order, but there is a kind of underlying historical rationale. So if you like, the history of the, of the discipline of anthropology is folded in to my attempt to acquaint you with it kind of central theoretical uh, concepts that you need, right? Uh, indeed, one of the prime questions that we'll be asking or we'll be engaging with throughout this uh, module is A, what theory is in anthropology? Why is it so important? And how does the place of theory in anthropology change as the discipline uh, develops, right? So, if you like, anthropology's own theory of theory and the history of that is part of what we're trying to understand uh, together as we go through uh, these central concepts that we'll be uh, examining. Now, on the PowerPoint that I'll be uh, uploading on Moodle for this session, today's session, I have put uh, a series of recommendations of books to read if you're interested in the history of anthropology. Some of them are kind of quite textbook type Others are more detailed historical accounts of different developments of anthropological theory um, in the past century and a half, which is basically the, the period in which anthropology has existed uh, as, a, as a professional discipline, roughly since the beginning of the 19th century until today. So if you really want to attack this question of history, I recommend that you um, uh, get one or more of these books and kind of treat it as, a, as an accompaniment to, to the, the the course that you'll be following with, uh, with me for the rest of this term. So what are the core aims of this course? First of all, they are to explore key theoretical perspectives, key ideas that have shaped anthropology. You may notice that each uh, session uh, that we'll be doing for the rest of this term has got a very pithy one or two word title. So we start with society, then we move to culture, then we move to materiality and practice. Then we move to structure. Then we move to agency, right? Um, colonialism, decolonization. Decolon de These are the words uh, that give the, the, each session its name. And the idea is really to home in on central concepts in this very kind of pithy kind of way, right? It can really give you the tools. But in doing so, it's massively important not least in the context in which anthropology finds itself today, and I'm referring here specifically to extremely important and uh, heated uh, and significant uh, debates that are taking right now, uh, taking place right now, not only within anthropology, but within academia more broadly, about decolonization, about um, um, exposing and critically reevaluating the fundamentally racist uh, uh, historical trajectories of so many disciplines, including anthropology, uh, and creating uh, disciplines that are fit for the present, that are actively anti-racist and critical um, in this regard. Um, also, of course, in relation to questions of gender, questions of sexuality, questions of disability. So these questions are extremely hot and extremely important and significant and being debated right now. And a course such as this would be negligent if it didn't uh, take them uh, fully on um, and really address these questions, which I want to do from the very beginning. Uh, and you'll see in the structure of the course, you know, again, as a teacher, one is confronted with a dilemma as to how to go about uh, making sure that one's course is sufficiently critical uh, and explicitly so, while at the same time ensuring that the students learn um, enough about the, the very history that they wish to be criticizing uh, in taking the course. So you have to get the balance right, right? So you have to decolonize the, co the course while at the same time addressing that colonial history and learning uh, uh, the content of it, right? So uh, uh, I've done this by effectively putting the question of the colonialism of anthropology uh, on the table very much from this first session. You will notice that one of the required readings for this week is uh, a, a reading that's created quite a storm within anthropology for the past year uh, called uh, The Case for Letting Anthropology Burn um, by a colleague working in the University of Chicago 
who made this very provocative argument about really the radical ways in which anthropology needs to change as a discipline in order to live up to the challenge of making it truly anti-racist. Um, so I put these issues on the table from the very beginning and we'll be examining these issues as we as the course unfolds in this kind of quasi-historical way that I explained uh, already, looking at key questions of who makes theory, um, how should or can anthropological knowledge be produced, by whom, uh, who and what should be the subject of theory and what sh should and can be its object, whose theories do we take seriously and whose theories are silenced. Those are all questions that we will be addressing uh, as part of this course. So this critical engagement with the history and development um, of uh, anthropological ideas is crucial. And in doing so, of course, we are given the opportunity finally to connect classic debates in anthropology, debates that took place many, many decades ago and which were subject to all of these historical forces that we're talking about in terms of colonialism, racism and so on with contemporary debates in anthropology, right? So connecting the past with the present in order to forge uh, the discipline's future, uh, if you like, is part of what we're uh, also uh, aiming for in this course. And I should say that there's an enormous responsibility <laughs> on me uh, when I teach a course such as this, because I take it that I'm teaching it to people who, some of whom will go on to join the next generation of anthropologists. Um, so, you know, the future is at stake when you teach a course such as this one, I feel. So I feel this responsibility uh, very much weighing into the way that I um, give this course. So I'm going to stop this clip now. This was the general kind of introduction to the course. The next clip is going to be a little bit about housekeeping. Um, and then we'll have a, a further uh, clip uh, which really engages with some key kind of conceptual issues that I want to put on the table for this uh, first session of ours um, uh, to close uh, the, the lectures that I'll be giving you for this week. So welcome once again. It's a real, real pleasure to be doing this. I wish I could be in a room with all of you and giving this as a live lecture. It's a completely different energy for me to have uh, people look at me, looking at me rather than just my laptop um, camera. I hope you appreciate the map of London behind me. I'm sitting in my uh, kitchen at home. I wanted to have a, the first session a bit on a homey. The plants are not uh, my responsibility. They are my partners. Um, she is uh, amazing when it comes to plants. She's also a brilliant anthropologist, by the way. Um, so uh, welcome once again and see you in the next clip. <laughs>